Hey everyone, it's Jason. Today we are going to do an unboxing for the Talisman Kingdom Hearts game. <clears throat> uh, so Talisman is a uh, game that came out. I'm not. I wasn't ever really familiar with it. Um, I'm actually not even still familiar with it. Uh, but it's a specific type of game that came out, and there's I think four edition. They made a fourth edition already, so it's been around for a while. Um, and then. Not terribly long ago, they came out with a Batman Talisman game. So basically, they took the Talisman game, which I think is just like, uh, kind of like a fa fantasy type game. Um, and they added Batman to it. And then now, they've taken that same style of game and made it with Kingdom Hearts. Um, so we're going to go with that. I've already unwrapped it. So this is a two to six player game. slide that over there so we got our king of march so with all the characters that are in here this takes place i'm going to assume um through kingdom hearts at least kingdom hearts 2 um <clears throat> it does not take place for kingdom hearts 3 for sure uh but there are uh characters from birth by sleep which all came out before too um Alright, so then here's the instructions. It's actually a fairly decent, uh, fairly good instruction book. It shows um, the different boards, the map, all your different cards, explains what they were. And we'll go over these as we get through them. So I'm not going to spend too much time. You have your characters, you have little miniatures, uh, sh what strength and magic are, health, fate. Uh, there's all your different characters, which we'll go through them too. <clears throat> Game setup, I love this. It actually shows like here's how the game board needs to be up. There's the board here, and plus with little numbers so, like step one, here's the board. Step two, it's this deck. Step three, it's that. I love it. And like even like going through your characters, like step five, here are your <clears throat> here are all the characters everyone could choose from. Here's step six, actually take the character you played as. Like step ten, take your magic cards. Um, yeah, it's such a very well done. Thing. It explains what you can do on your turn, movement or encounters, so every turn you have to move, uh, and then otherwise you're encountering things, what encountering means, how combat works, um, and then actually as an example of combat, it's not just a generalized example, like, oh, if I have six attack and they have six attack, this is what happens, it's, you know, oh, if you have all of these items, you know, you could play this to just dodge to stop the attack. Or you could use this card plus this card to do this. Oh, well, I tied them. Oh, you could use this to do that. Like, it explains all the different styles you can do. Um, objects, carrying different spells. What happens if you become a Heartless. What happens if you're defeated or lose a turn. Um, different ways to move around. Because uh, there's certain, there's three different areas of the board, and you have to use certain things to get from the outside to the inside. Um, how to score at the end of the game, if you want, you know, do that. Uh, plus an additional rule, so say, like, Talisman King of Hearts edition uses the faster play rules from the fourth revised edition. It is possible to adjust the rules. So you can do certain stuff in here to make it more like the original Talisman if you played it. There's also one to make it a little bit easier um, because you have to play so many cards but, you can only, but there can only be like X number of cards per space so this gives you the option of dropping extra cards you have on a space before you dr have to draw so let's say you can only have four cards on a space you have to draw cards and you have up to four cards played well, you could choose to drop two of your items then you don't have to draw two new cards uh, so it's actually kind of interesting. And then the little thing showing what all the different icons are. Except they did make an error here. And they have the roll, die, and adventure card icon switch. But that's, you know, not that big of a deal. Plus, there's this really cool flow chart at the end. Um, which, again, you don't see this in a lot of games. Um, the only other game I've ever seen a flow chart in is they made one after the fact... For the um, adventure system game, which currently, currently right now is uh, 
miniatures. It's Teen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and then they have one coming out for Batman. Uh, but yeah, this is actually really cool. It's like, um, this is any spells that must be before moving, do so, then you move. Go to pay gate to sit. Are there characters on your space? Yep, here's what you can do. Nope, here's what you can do. And then, does it have draw cards? Yes, and you do all this stuff. Nope, then you can skip to this. You know, and it's a great flow chart. You know, and then eventually either sends you back up to the top to do stuff, or it'll go to no to end your turn. Um, so that's very cool. Instruction book. Alright, let's get into some of the components. So I haven't popped anything out yet. Um, these are going to be your uh, counters, your dials. So you're going to snap these together. So you're going to have six different ones to you up to six players. You know, keep track of your strength, your magic, and your health. Um, you know, it keeps track of... Because uh, you can get things in the game that let you up your health and... Or up your strength and magic. Um, there's temporary boosts. You might say, during this turn, you gain one boost. You wouldn't adjust the counter then. Only if it's like a permanent boost. Um, and then your health can go up and down. Every character uh, you get to play as has a different setup. Uh, we have a bunch of our tokens here. We have some fate tokens. which let you re-roll a die. And then all these cool little charms here. Uh, so what these are for. These are your keychain charms. It might look familiar. Look at the end of your keyblades in the game. Uh, so if you drop an item somewhere... Uh, so let's say I have, I don't know, I'm just going to say, like, one of them is, like, Chip and Dale are followers. So if you drop them off on one space, you could take, like, this, uh, lamp token. You put it, one on the space, and then one on the card. So you keep track. Like, the outside of the board, you can just set them next to the space, so you know where that's where it goes. But when you start hitting the inner spaces, rather than putting cards on the board, blocking the text, having to keep moving them, you can just put your little tokens on them. To show that that's where they go. So it's pretty cool. Um, let's take a look at the board. Because that's the next thing in the box. If I can get it out of here. Now this thing is huge. So this is one tile. And it folds way out. Oh. So. That is your game board. Six of these giant tiles. So I'm going to try and figure out how to look at these. I just want to be careful I don't... I'm going to kind of collapse this down a bit. And we're going to look at... See if we can look at these a little bit at a time. So you're going to have a bunch of different stuff. So here's like a gateway to the darkness. Which lets you get to the inner, inner part. Uh, the very inner. So we're going to have just different locations from around the game. So you have like uh, the Mystical House, uh, Traverse Town, uh, a Gummy Path. There's a bunch of Gummy Paths. Uh, Corridor of Darkness, some more Gummy Paths. We have a Courtyard. They're kind of linked. So like these two Courtyard and Disney Castle are kind of like linked together. Um, this shows if you have to draw a card or not. This is an adventure card. Otherwise, if some of these, we have to roll a die to do something special. Um, so here we have, like, Monstro, Gummy Path. We have an Agrabah. Let's you do some different stuff. 100 Acre Woods. Like, this Gateway to Darkness has a die roll and an adventure card. Uh, so we get farther into the inside, the very inside, we have the World Terminus, we have Link Worlds. Let's see if I can get some more of these out here. This board's really big and I just don't want to like break it by holding it weird. Um, so you have the library, which goes to the castle. Uh, empty Corridor of Darkness, just a Corridor of Darkness. Uh, which might be a way to, like, move between them. Uh, we have the Olympic Coliseum, which has two cards. You have to draw two cards on that one. Uh, another Gummy Path. We have the Battle of a Thousand Heartless. You can see... Let's 
see on that one where there's like a gap in there between the yellow lines between that wonder wonderland that's one way to get to the next level we have the keyblade gar graveyard we have a chapel goes with hollow bastion um the final rest which has a keyblade you can only anchor if you're carrying a keyblade if you not have one you must turn back uh evil grounds link to worlds there is the middle spot, which is the door to darkness. Uh, volcanic crater, world of chaos. We have Atlantica, you know, our Disney World. Jungle, the deep jungle. Uh, more gummy paths, gummy paths, gummy paths. Uh, storm tossed island. The Corridor of Darkness and Destiny's Island, which are all kind of linked. There's the Secret Palace. I do like how the dummy paths are in between, like, the, uh, known worlds, and if they're linked, things are kind of together. Uh, it's just a bunch of empty corridors of darkness all over the place. Another dummy path. There's some Neverland. That's three cards. Uh, the Synthesis Shop. Oh, that one's kind of weird, because it's... Nowhere near anything else. I mean, it's part of Traverse Town, but it's not next to it. Uh, there's Halloween Town. End of the World. Uh, Giant Crevice. I think we've seen all of them. So, yeah, you start on the outside. Um, outside of the map here. And you can keep going around. When you roll a die, you get to pick which direction you go. So if you roll, like, a three, you know, if I'm right here, I can choose to go three this way or three this way. So you have your options. You, you can't, you have to go continuously one direction then. But then the next turn, you can turn around and go back. So it just kind of depends on what you roll. And then there's some of the spots, like, here they'll have a gap, which gets you to the second rung, which does the same thing. So, the, there's like three different ways to move. So there is this one, breaks open to that one. Um, and then there's the gateway to darkness here. It gets you from the second to the third path to the inner, inner spot. Um, and then you have to use the final resting place to get to the last spot, the door of darkness, to seal, to win the game. Um, other than that, there's uh, a couple encounter cards or gummy ship cards that let you transfer in between. Uh, the other thing is kind of different is once you get to the inner inner realm here, you can only move one space at a time, so you're not like flying around this. Uh, but basically, you come in at the end of the world down here, and then you can either go one, two, three, four spaces that way, or one, two, three, four spaces that way. You can go one way or the other um, to try and get to it. Um, I know there is a way, I forgot what it's called, but there's a way if like, you're losing, you can opt to retreat, essentially. And if you retreat, you still only move one turn at a time, but then you ignore... All the different stuff. So basically, like, I can't beat this. I'm going to leave. But you have to... It's going to take you several turns to leave. You can get back... To, like, I think back to the Gates of Darkness. And then you can kind of, like, rest up. Or even go back to other rungs. Try and build more stuff up. And you're like, like, hey, I just didn't have enough health. Or I didn't have enough potions. Or good enough cards. Um, so it's kind of a neat idea. Um, so that's the board. Pretty, pretty cool. Has all the different locations. I don't know, like, top of my head, even though I know a lot about Kingdom Hearts, I don't know everything. Like, top, like, wrap the top, so I don't know what worlds are missing for sure. I'd have to actually stop and think about it. But, I mean, between Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, you know, there's a ton of stuff. There's a lot of worlds, so I'm sure they didn't put every single one in. Because actually, if it would have been two, um, I don't think I saw the Pride Lands at all. 
I actually don't know if I saw so the battle of a thousand Battling a Thousand Heartless, which is one of the ways to move. That is from uh, Mulan. You do that in that stage. Um, but I don't actually think they had Mulan the World on there. Um, I think most of them were from Kingdom Hearts 1. Alright, we're going to go through some characters. Um, so, this is kind of neat how it goes. So, on the bottom here is where you can put your followers and your objects. And you can have more equipment. Uh than what you can actually be currently using. You can just set them aside, you can drop them for later or trade them to somebody else. Uh, but then each character is going to say where they start. So each character starts in a different spot. And then they're going to have different special abilities, different strengths. So five strength, one magic, four health, three fate. So he has a lot of fate, so he can reroll stuff more. A lot of physical strength, but he's not going to be good at magic. Um, Terra is also. It says you may change your die roll by one in Traverse Town or the Mystic Ho Mystical House. If Aqua or Ventus are in play, add one to your attack. And will you hold a Keyblade if the result of combat? If. Well, you hold a Keyblade if, as a result of combat, you have just lost a health, roll one die. If you roll a five, four, or five, or six, you do not lose that health, but you still lose the combat. Uh, and combat's done pretty easy, and we'll, I'll kind of explain that when we get to one of the bad guys. Yeah, so you're going to get Terra. We got good old Sora, who starts in the secret place. This is Kingdom Hearts 1 Sora. 4, 3, 4, 1. This is kind of right in the middle. Uh, you may roll two dice in combat and use the higher one to determine your score. You may use two weapons at the same time, except when using the Dream Shield or the Brave Warrior. Um, they do have Heartless cards. I don't know why. These are... These are just, uh... So the same back. Yep. They're sort of odd. Uh, so there are different abilities or things that will turn you into Heartless. If you become a Heartless, and you're Heartless for three turns. Uh, you leave all of your magical... Your items, magical or otherwise. Uh, your money and your followers. Your objects and your followers. On the space where you were turned into a Heartless. While you are heartless, you have one attack, one magic, and you move one space tur per turn. So you can't do anything else. Um, you may not add any additional attack or magic. If your character, if your character, or casting any spells you may have, when you return to normal, your character will be as you turn into heartless. So you don't adjust your dials or anything. You just a one attack, one magic, one movement for three turns. The only thing that sucks is because you have to move every turn. Um, so you have Donald, starts in Disney Castle, of course. Uh, higher Magic. Bunch of Fate. Um, you do not need to fight a Heartless on a Gummy Path. So he gets to skip them. If you are on a Gummy Path, instead of rolling a die to move, you may move to another Gummy Path space in the same region. If Huey is your follower, you may gain one attack. If Dewey is, you may gain one Magic. If Louie is, you gain one Health. If you lose them as if all you lose the bonus. So you gain extra bonus depending on which one you have. That's cool. Uh, we have Xi'an. So she starts in Traverse Town. Uh, she begins the game with one magic card. Uh, you may take and you may take followers from another character when you land on the same space. And you may always return to Traverse Town instead of taking your normal move. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Gives her some different options. Aqua, who will also start in Hollow Bastion. Oh, that's neat. They even show the picture of it behind him. Um, she's kind of down the middle, too. She has five fate, though. Oh, boy. Uh, you can choose to make a Lucky Charm for a character, healing them one in exchange for one money. Okay. Anytime you land on Traverse Town or Mystical House, you may move to an adjacent space that you're choosing. If Terra or Ventus are in play, add one to your magic. So that's kind of like be beneficial if you're playing three players. If someone plays, you play Terra, Venta, Ventus, and Aqua. You're all going to gain a bonus. Um, so Riku starts in the Storm Tossed Islands. You do not lose health when traveling through corridors of darkness. 
Uh, you may re-roll your die, roll in Hollow Bastion or Destiny's Island, and choose between the two outcomes. If Kyrie is in play, add one to your magic. There's another Heartless. We have Goofy starts in Disney's Castle. Uh, not very high strength, but he has some good health. Um, you always have an automatic shield. If, as a result of combat, you've just lost a health, roll one guy for all five or six. The shield protection, you do not lose health. If Donald Duck is in play, add one gear magic. So Goofy gains a bonus for having Donald Duck. Uh, this is the weird one to have in here. Just move on. Um, and I like said, because everyone else is either... Like, Donald and Goofy makes sense because it's just Sora and they're playable characters. Everyone else is a Keyblade Wheeler, except they added new lines. So I don't know why if you're going to add one co one Disney character that's not one of the main, like, Mickey, Donald, Goofy, why they didn't add um, more than one, or why Mulan was chosen. Because, I mean, even in the first game, you could have had Jack uh, from Halloween Town, you, Nightmare Before Christmas, you could have had Aladdin, you could have had Hercules, um, Peter Pan, uh, there's so many options, I'm not really sure why they specifically chose Mulan and only Mulan, plus I also thought it was weird because there's 11 characters then, so I didn't know why, why wouldn't you make it 12 characters and have another person? at least, or drop her down and make it 10 characters. It was just, it was just sort of an odd choice. Um, maybe it's because she's the only one they could really get rights for, because maybe you can't really copyright Mulan, where all the other Disney characters, like, except for, you know, maybe Mickey and Donald, which are straight up just Disney Disney, like, all the rest are from the other movies. Maybe they had to get rights to use all those movies. Um, because I... They don't call any of the things. They don't call it Alice in Wonderland or this. They call it, you know, like like Halloween Town. They don't call it Nightmare Before Christmas. They call it, I don't know. Maybe it's something like that. Who knows? Um, but she starts in Traverse Town. Uh, she's actually kind of neat. You can use your magic. You may add your magic to your combat. So she can get pretty beefy. Um, you may not use the Dream Rag in combat, but you may use it to trade for a gummy ship. If Mushu is your ally, your follower, you add one to your magic. If you lose him, you lose the bonus. Yeah, so use Mushu, so it must be the right to the movie. I don't know. Here we got Kyrie, Kingdom Heart 1 Kyrie. Uh, you begin the game with one magic card. Uh, during the game you always have a during the game you always have at least one magic card. Whenever you use your last remaining magic card, you immediately draw another. Whenever you have to draw a crown card, uh, encounter card, you may discard one card of your choice that you do not wish to encounter. Draw one more to replace it. You must encounter it. It's actually kind of cool. She always has one magic spell ready to go. More heartless. I think there are six heartless for each one for each character in case. Uh, King Mickey. Uh, begin the game with two magic cards. During the game, you always have at least one magic card. Same as Kyrie. Uh, if you have the Kingdom TD in your possession, which is a Keyblade, so that's kind of neat. He always has a Keyblade, no matter what. Uh, we have Ventus, who also starts in Hollow Bastion. Uh, you always have extra armor as a result of combat. You just lost a heart, roll a 5 or 6, armor protect you, you did not lose the combat. Or you did not lose the heart, but you did lose the combat. You can skip your turn and lose one attack to return to your starting quota of 4 health. Interesting. He only has one strength to begin with, but that's kind of neat. You know, the same space as Terra or Aqua add 3 to your attack for all combat. So he's kind of interesting. He works with the other two, but he has to be near them. And then we're back to Terra. So yeah, you get the... Uh, that's the only other thing that was sort of weird, is you got Terra Ventus, Ventus and Aqua, and you got, of course, Sora, Riku, and Kairi, and then Donald, Mickey, and um, Goofy, and then randomly you have Mulan, so it's like, okay, and then you have 
uh, Xi'an in here somewhere. No Roxas, though. I did Axel because Axel didn't become a Keyblade or really a good guy and kill Ang Ang the Kingdom Hearts 2, towards the Angish middle part. Um, but at least until 3 when he became a full Keyblade wielder. So I can get that because this isn't maybe that far into the game. Um, or Starling. But, like, why wouldn't you have Roxas? I know that Roxas didn't exist at the same time. But then again, neither did Xion. She didn't interact with any of these other characters, at least not in their Kingdom Heart 1 forms that they're showing. Um, so I would have taken out uh, Mulan and throwing in Roxas. Um, but hey, maybe this game just came out in 2019, so it's only a year old. Maybe they will come out with an expansion, like Kingdom Heart 3 expansion or something. Add, add some more characters. That'd be cool. Alright. Then we have a bunch of cards. We have item cards. Uh, probably villain cards in here too it looks like. Uh, we have encounter cards. And we have magic cards. Um, or armor cards. or I'm not sure. We'll go through and we'll look and see what we got. And again with this. This is a really neat looking game. Lots of different stuff. But I mean, you could easily, I could definitely see making expansions for this. I don't know. If, I mean, the problem is the board isn't going to change. So you couldn't do that unless you made something like overlays or something you could lay on the board, I guess. But, you know, I'm not sure on that. Um, or you could release like a second game board. But that just makes the game, you almost have to release like another full expan, another full base game expansion. Um,. Or something, or add like an add-on thing you can go to. Like, hey, you can jump over to this board and work on this objectives too, or something. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, so we have purple ones. Let's check that. We have some keyblades, and we have some. I'm gonna set the item ones off to the side. We'll get them with the other items. Um, but yeah, there's so many different characters. Not just not just the Disney characters that you play and interact with, but even the keyblade wielders. And other uh, monsters and Heartless. Because I don't know if they have just Heartless in here. If they included the Nobodies. But I mean you have uh, characters and allies and items from what? Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, 3. Disney Dream Drop. Coded. Which is recoded. Uh, Chain of Memories. Which is kind of just a rehash of Kingdom Hearts 1. Uh, but uh, Birth by Sleep. 365 over two days, um, Distant Dream Drop, uh, plus you have the new one coming out, uh, Melody of Memories, um, yeah, so many different stuff to go through, I'm, I know I missed a couple in there, guarantee it, uh, mobile game, uh, so here we have some spells, we have Fire, uh, cast a spell, get one, uh, point of temporary attack to any attack or defense, Fire off, add three points to attack or defense. Thunder, cast this by yourself when you're about to engage in combat. For that one combat only, Thunder allows you to add half of your magic rounded up to your attack. Neat. Uh, Thunder off. Uh, here's an easy to add like thun Thundara in Fire Fiagra. Um, she allows you to add your full attack or full magic. Uh, cure. This spell may be cast as required by casting it on yourself or another character. The recipient is restored to their original quota of four health. Um, I believe in the rules it says, um, because there's you can cast and get four plus one, is your health can be, I think your health and all your stats can be plus two whatever your standard is. Um, so if like you have Four magic, you can only go up to six magic, even though the thing might go up to like ten. Uh, you can't gain much more than that. Um, arrow cast is required on yourself, the character, or a follower. Arrow will shoot a gust of wind towards any danger and prevents a character from losing health or a uh, follower from being lost. Interesting. Gravity must be cast before movement and will pull an enemy or stranger card. In adjacent space to your space. Once the card is encountered, 
You may move and take your counters in order. Oh, so you can bring one guy to you and then move along. Stop. Cast on another character, they are immobilized. And you do nothing apart from negating the spell to reflect for the duration of that turn. It has the same effect when cast on an enemy. Enemies may not be attacked, but may be evaded. Why would you cast on somebody else? Uh, because you're working together. Because uh, you're kind of working against each other, even though it's a team game. But you can help each other out by... Uh, it's a cooperative, competitive game. Because you want to be the first person to get to the end. Because you get a bunch of points. And you want to have better items. But you may want someone to help you win. I mean, so that kind of depends on how you want to play it. Blizzard, you may cast this at the start of your turn, or when you have just completed your move. When cast, it empowers you to remove any upturned enemy or stranger cards from the board and place them in the discard. Alright, so get rid of some guys. Reflect, he gets any spell. Couple of those. Ooh, then we have skills that are actually magic. Um, sliding dash. Cast a sign, cast a spell to add plus one attack to any character. MP Hayes casts us to add one magic. Synthesis. This spell must be cast at the start of your turn before you move. When you cast a spell, it will convert any number of objects in your possession into money. Discard your chosen object and take one money for each. MP Drain. Cast before your turn, roll the die for movement. When you cast it, no character including your may cast another spell or use or gain any object until the start of your next turn. Interesting. Uh, we have a false corridor. You may use this spell instead of rolling the die for your movement. It creates a corridor of darkness and enables you to teleport to any other space in the same region. It does not drain attack and cannot be used on the inner region. There's outside the middle and then the inner. Um, MP Rage. Cast a spell to draw two magic cards up to your character's limit. I think you can only have, I think you have a plus one on magic or uh, spell cards. I have to recheck the book. Another MP Rage. We have a dodge roll. Uh, allows you to dodge and evade the enemy attack. Couple of those. Treasure Magnet when cast enables you to take either one magic object or follower from any character. Your choice from any other character. And so, again, you could use that as, like, a mean thing. Like, hey, ha, you have that cool item I want. You could take it away from them. Or, you could use it as, um, like, hey, you have that cool item I need to help me potentially win this upcoming battle. Or, you have an item that you don't need, let me take it off your hands. Uh, so it just kind of depends if you want to play how cooperative cooperative or non you want to play. So we opened up this one, so we're going to have a bunch of object cards. They're green, and a bunch of blue encounter cards. We're going to throw the encounters with the other encounters. We'll look at them in a minute. Let's look at some objects. So we have an Inferno Band. I just saw the Halo. Oh, it's a treasure chest. I see, I see. I didn't see what it was right away. Um, so you have Infernal Bang armor. When you have Infernal Bang in your possession, you do not lose heart or uh, health in the empty uh, darkness. So on the bottom here is they have a um, initiative. I think that's what it was called. I could be wrong. It's like a speed, basically. Um... So you're playing cards. I'm trying to see if I can find in the rule book what it's called. Five. The encounter number. So you're playing cards um, of various things. They the encounters they work in the I think the down direction. Let's see if I can find it. I do not see. Yeah, I don't see exactly where it says it. Um, I 
But yeah, that's what it's for. It's for like basically it's the speed of how quickly your thing works. It's, so they go in order. Um, so some things are qu work quicker than others. So another Inferno Bang, another Inferno Bang, another Inferno Bang. So they could have given some other alternate ones, but that's alright. Uh, accessory slot pack. In accessory slot, you can carry four extra objects while in your possession. If lost, leave any surplus in the space you are in. A couple of those. We have a gummy ship. Um, on your very next turn, instead of your normal move, you may choose to cross the barrier and go to space directly opposite the one you are in. Whether or not, whether you go or not, place the gummy ship on the discard pile. So on your next turn after you get this, you can cross to the next zone one direction or the other. Um, but then you have to get rid of it regardless. We have the green sword. Uh, when you have the Dream Sword, you may add one additional attack for the duration of any combat in which you use it. The Dream Shield. As if, there, if, as a result of combat, you lost health, roll a die, 5 or 6, you're protected. We've seen that ability as a couple of characters. The Dream Rod. Well, you have the Dream Rod, you may A, 1... Attack, add one attack to your roll for any combat, or two, trade it for a gummy ship if available in any gummy space path. So that's actually pretty powerful. And we have a ribbing. Uh, if the result of combat, you just lost health. If you roll a six, you're protected. It's not as good as the other one, or the shield. Uh, a protect chain. Yeah, it's the same. You roll four, five, or six, and you don't lose your health. So that's better. And then back to the Inferno Band. Alright. Objects were in a spun. Um, let's see what we have in the Encounters deck. The Encounters deck should... Be a bunch of different followers. Uh, all right, how do you open? Oh, I'm trying to open it from the wrong side. Um, as well as enemies, um, I don't know what else is in there. Like, I don't know if there's different. All right, there's a bunch of them. So we got quite a few. It's this giant deck. Uh, so I'm gonna split this in two, just it's not so hard to carry. So yeah, we're gonna have a bunch of different stuff. So here we have. For example, we have the Dark Side Heartless. Uh, so he has an attack of 6. So what happens when you go to fight him, if you encounter him, um, if Dark Side Heartless appears before you, um, it will remain here until it's defeated. So to, to fight him is you will have to use your attack value, so whatever your attack value is, um, and then you will roll a die, and then he will roll a die. So if you have an attack of 4... And he has a he, natural four, and he has six. You each roll a die. If you have more, end up with the combination of your die and your attack, and his die and his attack. If yours is more, you win. His is more, he wins. You take a, a point of damage. If you're tied, nothing happens. Um, you don't win. He doesn't win, but he stays there. Uh, and that's where you're going to use your different items, your magic, uh, your objects, and stuff like that to boost you. If there's another ally, another hero character in your same spot, they can help you out. Um, yeah, so that's how that that's how basic combat works. Um, use fate to re-roll your guy. So here we have the invisible heartless. Uh, invisible heartless is terrorizing this area. It will remain here until it is defeated. So if you don't defeat these guys, they'll stay there. We have a wizard. So now if you fought this one, you're going to have to use your magic staff. So that, that's where some characters would be better. Like Terra would definitely be better to go up against the strength characters because it has higher natural strength. Um, where some of the higher magic strength like Aqua would be better against these guys. Um, a wizard has appeared or remain here till defeated. We have a red nocturne. I'm not going to keep reading these if they're all the same. Here we go, it's only really different. A blue rock city. Uh, roll a die. Uh, a hollow bastion traverse down Disney Castle, Destiny's Island, 100 Acre Woods, or Agrabah. 
Oh, it's, it's where it shows up. So no matter where you flip this card, you roll a die, it moves there. So it might not even stay in the same area you're in. The Yellow Opera is wreaking havoc in this area. Green Rack Room, holy crikey, Tang. Uh, has appeared to cause chaos in this area. Yeah, it sure has. Oh, look, we found some money. Uh, change immediately for one money and place this item in the discard pile. A bunch of money cards. And I'm thinking the encounters, the lower ones, like a five, you're not hit as quick. So you have to defeat items. It's basically, if you had to draw two of these, you have to fight probably one of these heartless first because they're like threes and fours before you get your money. So it's essentially like. Uh, when you have to draw multiple encounter cards, or you have to deal with whatever's there, you're going to have to generally fight before you get to collect all your goods, because they have a higher encounter rate. Uh, double money, you get two. Uh, so you can get a gummy ship this way. Dream sword, that's kind of cool, if there's a regular item you can get, and they do the same as the other ones did. Ribbing, the Protect King, the Inferno Bag. So we have a new one. We have the Obsidian Ring. So now you can see all these guys just said Object. This one says Magical Object. Um, Obsidian Ring lasts for one use and will increase your attack by two for only one turn. So nice little boost. We have an Ether. Uh, increase your magic by two for one turn. Brave Warrior. We have Brave Warrior. Add one to your attack. For the duration of combat, you add three... We are fighting an invisible heartless. Uh, we have a tank. Uh, well, you have the tank. You add one extra attack. You can get some of these cards. Uh, camping set gets you one attack and one magic. A cottage to get you one attack, one magic, and one health. Potion roll a die. The result is equal to or greater than your health. Gain one. The elixir. Drink the elixir to add. It. One tier magic for the duration of any combo. Use it when you when you use it to defeat when you use it in combat to defeat an enemy. Gain one health. Cool. Uh, library books. Um, yeah, I don't really remember this item. Uh, we have the library books. They allow you to draw one more encounter card than required. You may discard one you do not wish, but you must encounter all others. Uh, we have the Rare Nut. When you have the Rare Nut, you do not lose health on any space. You should take one from you automatically. You may exchange it in any other potions card. Item card. Those ones. Oh, that's even neat. It shows you little pictures on the bottom of the stained glass window. I like how the cards kind of also look sort of like the uh, ones from... Uh, is it Chain of Memories? I think that's one that used the cards. Uh, if you're in the Hundred Acre Woods. And we're back to them. Yeah, then this one has... Heartless. Money. Keys. Keyblades. Abilities. Key hearts. It's kind of cool that they're all different ones on the back. Two different spells. Different types of armors, items. That's neat. I didn't even like pay pay that close of attention to those. All right, we have some more stuff. We have some followers. We have Chipping Dale. Well, Chipping Dale are your followers receive one extra space of movement on your turn. Huey, Huey can carry an extra treasure. Uh, if you lose him, you have to leave your thing. Dewey is the same, and Louie's the same. I mean, throw him in with uh. Donald, uh, Mushu, you gain one attack, you gain one magic, nice, Mushu's pretty powerful, uh, we have Tinkerbell, uh, she's a follower, you gain two magic, Simba, with Simba as your ally, you may evade all enemies in the deep jungle or a corridor of darkness, Dumbo, with well, Dumbo is your ally, follower, um, you may evade all enemies on Monster or the Gummy Path. Bambi, you may evade enemies in a corridor of darkness. A Dalmatian puppy, return this puppy 
Filmation Puppy 2, uh, Perga and Pongo received one money. That's funny. Is there a hundred and one of these? No. That'd be ridiculous. It'd be hilarious, but ridiculous. Uh, we have a keyhole. Place for bait tokens here when, when revealed. You may return one token to the supply per visit to use the keyhole to gain one health. When all four fate tokens have been returned to the supply, discard this keyhole. Interesting. So you can leave it. It's a place. You can leave it on a spot. Anyone can come by and use it. Uh, we have a treasure chest. Remain here for the rest of the game. Roll one die to open the treasure chest. One get two, do nothing. Three, gain one money. Four, gain one spell. Five, gain one health. Six, teleport to any region. Nice. Uh, the tree tops. It's kind of cool way to to have more look, more in depth locations. Um, remain here when you discover rolling. Uh, one, you're attacked by a heartless with an attack of seven. Two, attacked by a heart with an attack of two. Three, lose a turn. Four, find one money. Five, find two money. Or six, find three money. So it's kind of a risk reward. Uh, raft provisions. Place four fate tokens here. When revealed, you may return one token to gain one magic. So this is like a permanent boost, is what that is. It's kind of helpful. Uh, the accessory shop will remain here for the rest of the game. On each visit, you may buy treasures. Uh, dream sword, ribbons, element rings, accessory, slot pack two, dream shield two, dummy ship three. I wonder why they're like, some are one and some are twos and threes. Oh, it's number of money. I did it. One money, two money, never mind. I'm dumb. Uh, Trinity abilities. You have a Trinity jump. You have three characters on a space at once. Your Trinity jump gives each character one attack or one magic. So this is definitely a reason to be cooperative. Trinity charge. Uh, gives them the same thing. It's a different one. And the Trinity Ladder. Um, three characters on space at once gives is activating each player two money. Trinity Push gives each player one health. And the Trinity Detect. Exactly gives each character a chance to roll to receive a keyblade. If they roll a four or more is achieved, the character receives a keyblade if available. Um, it says available because there's only so many Keyblades in the game. There's not an unlimited amount. Um, Stranger Ally. Um, place Bill on your and your character in the Olympic Coliseum. Place a six-sided guy there. Just six side up. When a character lands here, they may choose to add one to their attack, or health, or their attack. Decrease the die by one each time it's draw a clip. Interesting. Uh, Stranger Allies, uh, Perga and Pongo, return a Dalmatian puppy here for one money. Uh, Genie, placing Agrabah, will grant a wish to one of the following wishes and vanish to discard pile. Gain one magic, money, strength, attack, magic, or health, or teleport. Uh, ooh, the white mushroom. Roll a die and place it in this spot. Deep Jungle, Wonder... Land Monstro, Hundred Acre Woods, Neverland, and Atlantica. We give the first player to first player to visit a Keyblade. Interesting. That's cool. Uh, the, the Fairy God. No, not the Fairy Godmothers. Um, they're just what? No. What are they? I can't remember. Um, anywho, Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether. Uh, set up shop or remain here for the rest of the game. Any visitors or shop there may trade money for up to two available chests from the cards. Merlin. Merlin has moved to this space from the Mystic House and will give one magic card to the first third through Lancer. If their magic, magic is sufficient to allow them to gain a card. Uh, once a magic card is given, it is discarded. And that's saying because in the book here... It actually shows you, I'm going to stop that for a sec. Uh, you have to have magic of at least three or higher to even get magic spells. Um, that shows how many you can get. 
Uh, so some characters would only have like one magic or two magic. Cannot use magic until they gain some sort of boost. Uh, okay, so now we have strangers that are villains. Uh, Maleficent tricks you into buying a magic card the price of one and one, one strength. Only affects those who can significantly buy one. If you do not have any money, she has no effect on you. Uh, and we're back to Chip and Gale. Alright. Got some more bad guys. Uh, we have Oogie Boogie. Uh, has sent his minions to capture his enemies. All heroes except Sora, Riku, Kairi, Terry, Ventus, and Aqua must miss one turn. After which Oogie Boogie turns into bugs and goes to the discard pile. Uh, we have Jafar. Jafar looks into a strong ring. Each player lands here. They must roll one dice. Becomes a Heartless for three turns. Loses one health. Loses one magic. Or teleports to Agrabah. Uh, Hades. Hades appears to cause havoc. Each time a player lands here. Becomes a Heartless. Loses one health. Loses one strength. Or teleports to the Olympic Coliseum. Ursula. Ursula is willing to bargain. She will take one health in exchange for one magic. Two money. One strength, one magic, or teleport to any space. Until a bargain is made, Earth will remain here and then vanish to the discard pile. Uh, we have, ooh, events. This is something new. Darkness sweeps through the this region, outer or middle. Uh, all characters in the must miss one turn. The darkness bang abates and place in the discard pile. Jiminy Cricket decides to follow your adventures and take notes. Discard all other followers and take no new ones until you bring Jiminy back to Disney Castle. Oh, that kind of sucks. The Princess's Wish. This wish grants one health to whoever finds it. Roll, roll to find the wish. Once, and it goes to different areas. Once found, discard the wish. Uh... Angel Heartless Attacks. This region, Elder Mill, has been overrun with Angel Heartless. All characters will lose one health, after which Angel Heartless is discarded. Uh, villains Meeting. Maleficent holds a meeting for all villains, which sucks the magical energy from every character, everyone's magic or spell cards, and the villains meeting must immediately be discarded. Merlin's Book. You have found Merlin's Fabled Spellbook. You immediately gain your full complement of magic cards according to your current spell level. Spell cards according to your current magic level. So it goes backwards. After drawing your limit, the book vanishes into the discard pile. Uh, Lock, Shock, and Barrel. Uh, come to kidnap you in Halloween Town, but you escape to one of the following worlds. Roll a die. Didn't tell you to roll a guy, but you roll a guy to jump to one of them. Uh, ooh, a power wild attack. A troop of power wild heartless attack you and steals all your money and treasure. Yeah, those guys do that. Immediately stash them in the deep jungle, place the cards and tokens there, and retreat and retreat back to the discard pile. Uh, the black fungus infest the world. For two rounds, all characters are affected by poison and may only move one space per turn, after which is discarded. Um, Ariel. You're visited by Ariel. Choose one treasure and, or object and from the object decks. After which Ariel returned to the land to remainder, offering the following. You can go buy stuff from her. Cool. Uh, Jack Stellington. You summon Jack Stellington, who increases your Attack by one, or magic by one. If you're in Halloween Town, also gain one health. Then he is placed in a discard pile. Uh, there's some Shadow Heartless who are a lot easier to defeat. They have one. And I'll probably have just a bunch of those. Uh, Dark Ball Heartless. He's laying waste to this area. So two. I was wondering if we get some more, some more bad guys. Uh, Soldier Heartless are stuck in this area. So you have three. Um, we have a four cost. Air Heartless, Air Soldier Heartless has appeared in this area. And that is what we got. Well, this explains, uh, some of these other, uh, events and ally characters and stuff. Explain why they didn't have some of the other characters in the game to play as. Um, but I still think it would have been cooler to play as them. 
uh, you know, just make it a, a double thing. Like, hey, you, if you have this character in play, take them up. Which, that'd be cool, again, if you made an expansion. Because you could even then have some of the other Keyblade but other playable characters and just take them out. Um, so this is the back of the Keyblade cards. Keyblade, and they have different versions. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. So one for each of these. So let's see which ones we got. We have the Divine Rose. You may only enter the Guard Darkness if you possess a Keyblade. So we're not going to do anything special otherwise. Uh, Three Wishes. The Olympia. Pumpkinhead. Oathkeeper. And Oblivion. Do they match all the symbols on the back then? I don't think they do. Hmm. Because that could be Oblivion. That could be Oathkeeper, the first one. Yeah, there's no pumpkin. Or Olympic coin. That's kind of a bummer. Okay, anywho. Um, so that's all the cards. They're gonna fit nicely into the box. And this is the thing, look at how much extra space, because there's a little spot in here that fits the character cards. Which fits perfectly. They fit like pretty exact. But I got I have a full another deck here. So I mean I guess it's, you could split it in half. And you know, put encounter cards on one side or but there's still so much extra room. This is a spot for all the dice. Um, here's for all your different tokens. You have definitely more room for tokens uh, in them. And then here's big open area, so again, you can put more tokens in there. And then I'm begging. These guys also fit right in there, so if you ever had to add more. So it's like they made the game, the box, almost big enough to add more, more stuff to it. Um... So I really wonder if they are planning on making potential expansion, or maybe they had the idea of it. Uh, you gotta remember, you also have your six counters, big counters, but yeah, there's enough room in this big giant, this big giant open area for everything. Because you could probably, probably put all the miniatures in that one, put all the other things in here, and then you have little baggies or whatever, um, or however. The only thing I don't like is. You can't, you might not be able to sweep the cards to put them in there. Um, I don't think things have a ton of shuffling, but I'm a sucker for sweeping all my cards for games. So here's this cool guys. They're a shiny blue with the uh, crown logo as the one. Um, I love dice, so any, any excuse to get new dice, I'm all for it. And those guys fit nicely in there. Here's the money. Little crystal gems. Um, I like these. I wish I had more of these. Um, oop. As I'm losing, these would be great for like villainous. Uh, just neat little things. Uh, this package here, these are just their little clips for making your spin dials. And then, finally, the very last thing we have are all of the miniatures. Alright, who do we want to start with? Let's start with Mulan, because out of all of these characters, she's the least exciting um, nothing against Mulan, just... I'm gonna play cool Kingdom Heart characters. I wanna play as cool Kingdom Heart characters. Uh, these are actually pretty neat. Get zooming well enough. There we go. They're pretty detailed, though. Um, she's got, like, her standing attack pose. You can see her, you know, see some details in there.
Up next, we have Xi'an, Zion. I'm never sure how to pronounce that. So she just got like a generic keyblade. You can see like her chain there, like hangs on her side. It's a little bent, but that's not a big deal. Um, yeah, I still wish I had a Roxas to go with it, with her. But you know, maybe again you can get Kingdom Hearts three version, and I'll give you Roxas and uh, get my Roxas and Axel. Um. Here we have Ventus. Really cool with all the details. I mean, essentially, Ventus is Roxas. As same as Sora, I guess. Uh, I love that he always holds his Keyblade downwards like that. That's pretty cool. Um, and they have like a nobody type symbol in there instead of the regular Kingdom Hearts symbol. Aqua. Holds hers way out like that. These would look fantastic if they were painted. I am unfortunately a terrible painter. So it probably won't happen. And the final three of the first by sleep we have Terra. Just kind of hanging out with his big old blade. He's got that weird, you know, skirt type thing. Alright, let's look at Kyrie. Kyrie gets a T-Blade, which I love. Um, cause she gets one anyhow in like three, but I just like the fact that they gave her one in here. Um, I'm not sure which one that is off the top of my head. It's a springtime one. It might be her own unique Keyblade. I'm not sure. I didn't think hers was that flowery. Um, then we have Riku. And he's got his evil, evilish Keyblade. All the straps and belts on there. Even the poses, like their heads being turned, kind of slightly cocked and everything. And we have good old King Mickey. Which, that's not the Kingdom Key, which is odd. Like, they didn't give him the Kingdom Key. That is the, oh, I want to say the Wishing Star, if I remember too many for me to remember them all. Um, but yeah, I love to see varying figures too, like um, give me King Mickey and like his uh, um, his hooded form or the characters in like some of their altered forms. Here's Goofy. There's Big old Heel. He um, yeah, you get Goofy with different shields or Donald with different items. That'd be cool. Uh, their Kingdom Heart 3 outfit. So here's Donald. His wand. It has a hat. And finally, we have good old Sora. He does just have the regular Kingdom key. And I like that the Kate Ox is even incorporated the uh, chain. The key chain. Like, it didn't just have it hanging out. It's just like stuck to it. But uh, I yeah, guess still cool. Uh, but yeah, you feel like Amla, like some of his other forms, like Valor or, uh, um, you know, those. The Kingdom Heart 2 forms, you know, some of that stuff would be cool. I could definitely see, like, some neat stuff. But I mean, you know, can you, can you get the market from it? That's the thing. Alright, so that is the Talisman Kingdom Hearts game. Um, yeah, it looks super fun. A uh, lot of, uh, what do you call it, just details to the game, like representation. They could have went a lot more generic on stuff, but it, it seems to fit really well. And it seems like to be open very much to having, um, 
definitely like expansions or other add-ons and stuff. I don't know if they're going to or planning to. I don't think they ever did any for the Batman one that I know of, but maybe it just didn't sell as well. Um, because there's been a bazillion Batman games. This is the outside of the card game from years ago, uh, which they only released like the starter set in America. There's not been any Kingdom Heart games, so um, there's Riku with his evil blades. He's not the one he has. Um, yeah, because he definitely releases stuff with like new characters, new uh, new items, new villains to fight, different encounter spaces. Again, it'd be weird not to have different places on the board, but still, that's not a big deal. But you could also add like a sideboard. And be like, hey, you can hop over here and try and do some extra things over here and gain extra bonuses uh, type of thing. Um, I'm thinking like you've seen the Firefly game where they have the base core and then they added a map to each other's side. Although they linked right together. You could do something like that to just add like an expansion on like one side. I don't know. Um, Alright, well, I'll check you guys in some other video. See you later. Bye.